Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make coffee. I don't care what coffee maker you have, this is just gonna be a general video. If you've never made coffee, it's gonna be very basic, very simple. I, I had no idea how to make coffee when I first started drinking it four years ago. And there's just numerous ways to make it. This is gonna be a very basic way with a Mr. Coffee. Um, this is just a very standard coffee maker. There's pour overs, there's all kinds of different ways but we're gonna do just this way. Again, try to, you might be able to use this for whatever coffee maker you have. So you're gonna need some coffee. So if you're new to coffee, I recommend Dunkin' Donuts Original Blend. It's a medium roast. It's just kind of like, I consider it kind of my standard. It's just right there in the middle, not too dark, not too light. You know, you may just have Folgers, that's fine too. So whatever coffee, make sure it's, it has to be ground at a medium grind. So when you get coffee at a, at a store in a container, it is ground at a medium grind. Now, you may get flavored coffee. They've got all kinds of different flavors. Those are still really, really bitter. They, but they do taste whatever, like you get vanilla, caramel, all kinds, but it still has that bitter taste to it. And I'm gonna show you how to take that away at the end because I can't drink black coffee yet. It's been five years now and I still can't drink it. I, I don't know that I ever will be able to. Okay, so whatever coffee, make, coffee maker you have, it's gonna have a spot. You're gonna put water in it and coffee in it. It's gonna have a brew head, so it's gonna heat the water to a really high temperature, usually around 200 degrees, shoot it over the coffee grounds. Now this is considered a reusable filter. You can reuse this each time. You may or may not have this, and you don't have to have this, but you do have to have some sort of filter. Now these are basket style filters. This is eight to 12 cup. I know it says eight to 12 cup. This is a 12 cup coffee maker. So again, this is a basket style filter. You may have a cone shaped filter that are shaped like cones. So you'll need a cone shaped filter. And you may have a five cup coffee maker and that'll take a five cup filter, but this is a 12 cup filter. You're gonna need one of them. You don't use both at the same time. It's either or. Now with the reusable filter, you will get a little bit of sediment. So it's just really, really fine coffee in the bottom that floats to the bottom of your, of your coffee that you will notice. But with a paper filter, you don't get any sediment at all. Okay, next, you will have to have some sort of brew basket. So this brew basket, you don't put the coffee in here. This is to hold the filter. You're gonna put the permanent filter in there or the paper filter. And a, a nice thing to make sure is that it's hugging the walls. You're gonna put your coffee grounds right there in the middle. Okay, so next, let's talk how much coffee to use. Coffee makers generally will brew whatever amount of water you put back here, that's what they brew. Now, I don't have to fix a full 12 cups, but I'm gonna demonstrate the full 12 cups. And I use one tablespoon for every cup that I'm gonna brew. So if I'm gonna do four, I would put four tablespoons in my filter. Six, six, eight, 10, 10, 12. But you gotta make sure that you only fill it up to the proper amount. There's no button you press to say, oh, just an eight cup. So whatever amount of water, when you press the brew button, it brews the entire amount of water back here and then they typically have a warming plate. So if you have, this is called a glass carafe. I called it a coffee pot. The correct term is a carafe. If it's glass, you usually have a warming plate. If it's a thermos, like a double wall stainless steel, that's what keeps it warm and you will not have a warming plate. The warming plate is designed to keep your coffee warm after it's done brewing. This particular coffee maker keeps the coffee warm for four hours before it shuts off automatically. If you have a, a stainless steel carafe, then it usually shuts the coffee maker off as soon as it's done brewing and it relies on that to keep it warm. Now let's talk about this as a lid. You have to have these lids installed because it's part of the brew system. So here we have the brew basket. There's usually a plunger. Most of these coffee makers have some sort of pause brewing. You can take it out while it's brewing so it won't drip down. But this lid is what pushes up that plunger to let the coffee out the bottom. Now you may lose that, that little O-ring sometimes does come detached and the spring and the plunger will fall out. You'll have to find everything. Very simple to put back together. But you do have to have all of this for the brew to work properly. So brew baskets can be all different shapes and sizes. Again, cone, basket. They usually have some sort of back. You wanna make sure it's installed correctly so that the brew head will come down and the lid will close. All very important. So let's put our, again, our filter. Make sure, and these filters, they come in these big things. Sometimes they're hard to separate. Make sure you get just one. They're super, super thin. You wanna just get one filter. 
So when you're starting off, one tablespoon for every cup you're gonna brew. So one, two, and I'm gonna go to 12. Okay, so there's 12 tablespoons. I can vary this. I don't wanna go more than 12, but say my coffee is too strong, it's still gonna be bitter no matter how you, how you brew it, but say you don't want it as strong, I can go down to 10, eight, I can put eight tablespoons and still do the 12. You, you are in control of how much coffee and water you put in. And I'm showing you how, with a tablespoon, you're gonna get used to this. So whatever amount of coffee you like eventually, fill that up like a cup, use like a, th a three quarter cup or a half cup, fill it up, see where your tablespoons ends up, and that way you're just putting in one big thing and, and dumping it in there. Okay, so now it's time to add the water. I use the carafe because that way I'm putting in the proper amount. You don't have to use the carafe. You can just fill it up with say the, the hose out of your faucet but there's usually a window on the side to let you know, don't overfill it. Now, what type of water? I use water out of my faucet. Um, you can use bottled water. They say not to use distilled water. You can use filtered water, but again, I just use normal water out of my faucet. So again, coffee makers usually have a little hole back here to prevent you from overfilling it. So we're gonna fill it up, use the carafe to fill it up. Again, don't turn it on yet. We're not gonna turn it on until we get everything ready. So now you're gonna put the carafe back. Now this filter basket may pop up a little bit, but it's gonna be held down when it fills up with water and the lid's gonna close it. So we can check, yeah, I've got, I've got my 12 cups in. Okay, so we're gonna find your brew now button. It can be anywhere, there might be up here, but some button that's gonna cause it to start brewing. Now you should notice something right away. It doesn't take very long to start heating up the water. You'll start hearing heating the water and kind of putting it over the coffee. If you don't hear anything within a couple minutes, then something's not right. But here it's only been maybe 20 seconds and I'm starting to hear it heat up. And again, make sure your craft is installed. Sometimes you can open the lids, sometimes you can't. With this particular model, I can open the lid, but sometimes the brew head is in the lid and you're not allowed to open it. So again, be very careful with what's going on, but we can see the hot water is going over the coffee grounds right now. It's creating a bloom. I don't know a whole bunch about a coffee bloom, but I know when it first gets hot water, it kind of looks like that. Okay, so I got an old Cuisinart that I took apart. So I want to show people how coffee makers work also. So this is where you put the water. When you turn it on, there's a heating element down here that draws the water in. This is the inside of that heating element. It superheats it, then shoots it up over another tube to where it goes over the brew, over the coffee. And I've disassembled a lot of coffee makers. This, they're all built about the same. So this heating element that heated the water also acts as the heating element that is right here. This is what also keeps your coffee warm when it's done brewing. So one heating element does both things. I, I don't know necessarily how it does it, but it does do it. So it heats the water and then it actually keeps your craft warm by keeping this warming plate warm. And a good rule of thumb is one minute per cup. So this is gonna take about 12 minutes. Now, you may not be able to drink coffee. It may be too bitter. It is way too bitter for me. I do have to add some sugar or some sugar and some creamer. Now I do like this French vanilla. Regular creamer just doesn't quite give enough flavor for me. This French vanilla works really nice, but there are so many different kinds. This is a powder. There's so many kinds of creamers in the dairy that are refrigerated. They come in all different flavors. Now those flavors sometimes are full of a lot of sugar, but they do taste delicious and they really take away all that bitterness from coffee. Okay, so let's talk caffeine. So a typical coffee mug holds about eight to 10 ounces of coffee. Eight to 10 ounces of coffee typically has about 100 milligrams of, of caffeine in it. So if you're used to drinking Monsters and, and Red Bulls, those can have anywhere from 300 uh, grams of caffeine. So a typical cup of coffee, about 190 to 100 grams of caffeine. Bre now this is a medium roast. I always thought that dark roast, like a really dark French roast, had more caffeine, but they tell me a, a breakfast blend. So you can get breakfast blends that are really light. They don't look very dark when they're brewing and you think, well, that's not gonna be much coffee, but apparently those have more, that has more caffeine in it. And I guess that might be why they call it a breakfast roast because you want the most caffeine in the morning. But to me, I just haven't been able to get um, 
I have, I have not been able to taste, I, I just don't like the taste of a breakfast roast. A medium roast is just, just perfect for me. But that's the nice thing about coffee. Whatever roast you like, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we can see all the coffee grounds are saturated now. Now some things that can happen, so say you put too much coffee in or not, you don't have the right filter basket in, you might start to get coffee grounds overflowing your filter and then you'll start getting coffee grounds in your coffee, that's bad. You're not doing something right. Wrong filter basket, wrong something, your coffee's ground too fine, those are all, could be some things that are happening. So any questions you come across, leave them in the comments down below. I'm gonna especially watch this video comments. I wanna help people. I was so new to coffee. I didn't have a lot of instruction how to make coffee. It was kind of a, it just, I was on Mountain Dew. I had to get off Mountain Dew and I'm just so much better for it drinking coffee. Now, if there's any questions you got at all, leave them down there below. There's a lot of people that help, that follow my videos that are gonna help. I'm gonna watch those comments. No comment is, it can be too wrong. Uh, just leave your comments. I'm gonna watch them. I'm gonna help as much as I can. And, and the comments can be evil, even over a certain coffee maker. I've got several coffee makers. Say, yeah, I got a Cuisinart and this and that, and this is not happening. So leave it in the comments. I will try to help as much as I can. Now, one thing I wish I would have started drinking first is iced coffee. So this is considered hot coffee. It's at the proper ratio, and I got a mixed creamer and all of that. But what really, really helped me get over the edge was, was iced coffee. Or another way of putting it, cold brew coffee. I can, I'm gonna do a whole nother video on that. And I do have some videos on cold brew coffee. It tastes absolutely delicious. It's so smooth. Now the cold brew coffee is not smooth because it's cold brew. You, I still have to add the milk and the sugar and that's kind of what takes the bitterness away. But I do think it has just a, a nice smoother edge over a hot coffee. But the brewing techniques are different for a cold brew and, a, and an iced coffee. I would probably tell somebody, if, if somebody was trying to get into coffee for the very first time, I would say try cold brew um, and add the milk and the syrups, and that takes all the bitterness away, makes it very smooth, and then you can kind of work over to the hot coffee with some creamers. Now, the cappuccinos and lattes, that's a whole different world. And my cappuccinos and lattes have a lot of sugar and milk in them. It's got an espresso shot, which is just a really concentrated coffee. Um, and I have to add all the creamers and, or the, the milks and the sugars to take away all that bitterness from that. But you do get the you do get the caffeine because you have an espresso shot. And, and we could spend hours talking about coffee because there's so many different kinds of coffee makers out there. There's bun, there's $300 coffee makers. This one's a $20, 20 to $40 coffee maker. And, and then there's even pour over coffee makers where you're simply pouring the water over the coffee grounds at a certain rate. You know, I just, I grew up watching my dad grab it like a cup, a, a one cup measuring cup. He would just scoop it out, dump it in the filter. It was a bun, pour the water in, hit the button and it was done. You know, that's all I ever saw. And to me, it was just kind of a mystery. Um, and I, he always drank it black and I thought, well, I can't drink it black, so I guess I can't drink coffee, but I have learned to, that if you don't drink black coffee, you can still drink it. Okay, so this coffee maker is finishing up. Towards the end, they kind of puff and smoke. You'll get a bunch of steam. That's just how coffee makers work. This is normal. Now you'll see it's important. The coffee and the water got really high in the basket, but it never went over the filter. If it goes over the filter, if the water rises above it, you're gonna get coffee grounds in your coffee. Okay, so again, our brew now is on, our warming plate is on. Be careful, all of this is really, really hot and coffee's really hot. You're getting a few drips from that plunger coming down. So again, let's pour the coffee. It's very, very hot. Now, if you can drink it like this, again, it's super, super hot, really hard to drink like that. So I would let it cool a little bit, but that is a nice cup of coffee. Now, when I first start, and I'm gonna add my creamer and sugar. When I first started adding cream and sugar, I, added, I think I added way too much, but I, I kind of, it just tasted good. I know it wasn't good for me, but I just added way too much creamer and sugar. Now I'm getting less and less, but you'll be surprised how much sugar and creamer you add to kind of take away all the bitterness. I think mine's about a tablespoon and a half and probably about a half a tablespoon of sugar, maybe a whole tablespoon. 
So give it a good stir. This also helps cool it down a little bit too. Okay, so that, that's a really good cup of coffee. To me, there's absolutely no bitterness, what taste whatsoever. Now I can drink this. It's super, super hot. Be careful, you don't wanna just guzzle it, but if you kind of blow on it, if you blow on it and then kind of slurp the top of the coffee where it's cool, you can drink hot coffee. But again, be very, very careful. That is really, really hot if that will burn you. You know, right now, even that's cooled off a little bit, it's still 155. Again, have fun with it. There's so many different types of creamer. You can add just milk and sugar. You know, we can, you can leave in the comments what your favorite coffee is. You may be drinking a coffee I've never heard of. And, and I will tell you that, you know, store-bought coffee, you know, it only tastes so good. It does make a world of difference. If you can go to a local coffee shop, have them grind up some beans that day, bring them home already ground or grind them up yourself, um, it does make a world of difference. The coffee does taste a little bit better. It doesn't help with the bitterness, you know, and all of that, but you can get more of the flavor of the coffee, like a more standard flavor cup coffee. So if, if you're new to my channel, you'll know that I do a lot of coffee maker reviews. Again, my journey in coffee started five years ago, had no idea about it. Um, it's been an awesome journey. I'm doing this full time now. I've branched off and doing some other product reviews. You know, I was an airplane mechanic for many years, so I have a mechanical background. You know, I can look at something and I can see, okay, I know what that, when you're an aircraft mechanic, you have to know how to read the manuals first. You have to know how something works before you even start working on it. So I can bring that with coffee makers. I, I don't know the ins and outs of coffee for se of, the bloom and what's happening and all that, but I can tell you, I can do temperature checks, timing, and tell you the ins and outs of how things kind of work. And I definitely read the manuals. The first thing I do when I get a coffee maker, I read all the manuals, and I'll do most things step by step. So I typically do, if you're looking in the, in the market for a coffee maker, I've got my best coffee makers. You know, there's a whole nother world of K-cups. You know, K-cups only have two tablespoons of coffee in them. You're only gonna get eight ounces out of a K cup. You know, you're only gonna get one of these little cup, cups of coffee out of a single K cup. Whereas, you know, when you make a pot of coffee, you get 12. And that's a whole nother world in itself. So this says 12 cups, but 12 coffee cups is different than a measuring cup. So that's, I did a whole video just on the, the difference between a measuring cup of, of liquid and a coffee cup. They're not the same. These are smaller. So I hope this video helps. That is the, the primary purpose of my videos. I just wanna help. There's a lot of people that wanna make coffee that, and they are looking at a new coffee maker and I'm trying to tell them, okay, here's how this coffee maker works. So that is the whole point of my coffee maker reviews. This one I'm gonna especially keep an eye on. If anybody's got a question, what type of coffee to use? I, I, this is overflowing. This didn't work this way or this machine's broke. I will try to help as much as I can. And there's also several other people that watch these videos and most of them help out too. That, that's one thing I found about the coffee world. It's a lot of people wanting to help. It, it can be intimidating. It was very intimidating for me. And that is one of the main reasons behind me starting this channel is because I just wanted to help and not be as intimidating for other people. So again, if you hit the subscribe button right below the video, there is a subscribe button. You'll, um, you'll get, and then if you hit the little bell that looks like a notification bell, you'll get notified when I make new videos. And again, you might get a notification that I reviewed a Ninja Foodie or I, I reviewed a Ninja Air Fryer. Again, I, I just bring a practical standpoint of, hey, this is how it works. Sometimes I make some meals in them. I'm not an excellent cook. I just kind of read the manual and, and it shows me how to make something. I'll use that. And check out my other channel. I have a Just A Dad uh, tips channel. This is Just A Dad. The tips channel, it's videos that I don't necessarily think are big. Um, you know, one's just how, to, how an air freshener works. You know, it, it helped a lot of people, but I don't think people that are following my coffee channel would want to see how an air freshener works. So I've got a channel that's kind of devoted to just odds and ends things, how to install different things, things that I think will help people, but may not be helpful for people that follow this channel. So again, I really appreciate everybody's support. And if you could, please like and subscribe.